What's up everyone, it's Dylan here and today I'm coming back to you with another video which is a labyrinth run that let me tell you I suffered for this video guys I did suffer literally so you sticking around here and liking and just giving me your thoughts on the comment section means so much to me so without further ado let's just go into the video and I hope you enjoy it okay I feel like we have a good team here that can beat the boss Okay, this team kind of looked decent, so we might have a chance. Alright, we're gonna try our luck with this team and see how it goes. I don't know, I think this one has some potential. Okay boys, I guess this is the run. We have it, we can kill it. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, I knew the taunt would have been so good. Hell yeah. Let's go. This is the run, guys. This is the run. Guys, I think we have the white unit to beat it again and go for Sariel. All right, guys, look at it. The infect did a job. The infect. I guess we got the hang of it. Yes. Now she can kill it. Yes. This one. Oh, okay. Yes, <laughs> we did it again. Oh, God. Guys, guys, I think this is the run. This one is the run. We can finish it <laughs> finally. Okay guys, I guess we have it this time. We have a good one. We have the good team. We have a good passives. We have good cards. I guess this is the one we can do it and finish the labyrinth. All right guys, <laughs> we are finally there at the final boss. I guess this is the right team, okay? We got everything. We can do it here. My God, it's been so long. <laughs> I don't know, two to three hours I've been grinding this. This is crazy, but we finally got it. I guess this is the right team. We can do it with this. Like, we deal a lot of damage. Um, What should I go for? I don't know if we're going to do damage here. So, yeah, this is fully there. I guess that could be the right choice. I'm not sure. All right. Uh, the damage is not so good. I'm not so optimistic about it. Okay. We got him to power of health. All right. Don't deal so much damage, please. Okay. The damage is okay. Hopefully he don't kill us. Um, okay, Freer, <laughs> Freer is dead. The thing is, he's now recovering a lot of it. Oh, no, 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 no I, I, I jinxed myself. Oh, oh my god. Ah. I'm dead, guys. <laughs> dead, guys. It's been so long. <laughs> I got to go back to the beginning. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. <laughs> Oh. So, I was so frustrated after this because I've been grinding for like three to four hours. I was so tired. <laughs> I was just like, forget it. Come back another day and try it again. But then, but then there was this run that saved me. This run that was just mishmash of character and passives actually saved me and I was able to clear the labyrinth for the final time and I was so happy that I can make a video about it and well here's the video and here's the run for you guys 
Okay guys, before we go into the full run, I wanted to give you some tips and information so it saves so much of your time and you can apply these and go do your run before even watching my full run. You know, it's it's some information that I actually wanted to know before I do my runs. So without further ado, let's go into it. So the first one is the bosses. We have three bosses in the normal labyrinth, uh, which is Tarmiel, Sariel and Mile. All of them can't be stunned or petrified, but they can be frozen or you can put infect on them. So if you couldn't kill them the first turn, you, they are locked to not recover their HP. The second boss, Sariel, has a 30% damage cap, so keep that in mind. But also, I'm not so sure about this, but you need above 70k to out-CC the guy. And as well for Mild, you need above 100k CC to go first. So, you know, keep those in mind because sometimes you get the second turn and, you know, they demolish you basically if you don't have um, high defense that's like HP and uh, defense, they're going to be dead. So second tips is best passives, in my opinion. This, you know, these are not facts, just my opinion. I got a good run with these and I think you will too. So the first one being all sets increase for different races. Under that, there will be a description saying that any of your character move a card to gain an orb or use it to gain an orb, you get 15% to 20% increase attack if they are SSR and you are. If it's SR, you get 10%. You can even go for that if you, you know, uh, didn't find any. But the SSR and the UR is actually really good if you stay around for a second turn. If you just take them down in the first turn, well, go for it. So keep that in mind. That's one of the best passives you could get. Second one being the attack, HP, and defense increase for SR is 100%, for SSR is 150%, and UR is 200%. If you get lucky to get the UR, you are really good doing so good here. So always keep in mind that attack, then HP, then defense. So if you get the attack, go for that one first, then the HP, then the defense. And by the way, they can stack as well. So um, I tried this with different rarities, so I, I don't know if the same rarity will stack, so I, I don't want to like give you misinformation, but I got a SSR and then I got a the UR attack increase, so keep that in mind. My Escanor had 50k attack, <laughs> that's crazy. All right, the next one after that is crit damage and crit chance increase. Those two passives are good as well. If you have someone like Escanor, you can go for crit chance or you can go for crit damage as well. You know, both of them apply. If he crit damage the enemy, you know, the damage will be so much. If it, if he doesn't crit at all, you can go for the crit chance. So, like I said, you can pick whatever you like to. Then after that, any passive that comes along, you can pick it if you have picked these first. Okay, so the last three and four tips is left side is always better than the right side because the right side is more gambly you don't know where you get so you know kind of don't go there unless you have a two dead units and want to revive one of them because it's going to be hard to just go with two units unless you have escanor with so many attacks so yeah and uh, the fourth one is the underground labyrinth uh, we have like the characters there are more like bosses so the bosses there are tanky and the final boss can revive itself with half HP, so keep that in mind once you go for a final attack thinking that you kill them. Nope, it revives. And can't be debuffed. And also, um, his CC cap is around 114, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, keep that in mind because he does a lot of damage, so you need to OCC the guy. Unless you have HP and defense increase, then you don't have to worry at all. All right, with that out of the way, let's go into the full run of the Labyrinth and uh, I'll tell you why did I pick those characters or why did I pick a passive. So, you know, you kind of get some information from that as well. And so if you guys like this video and this like these type of tips and information regarding these type of modes in the game, please subscribe and like. And also I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Without further ado, let's go into it.
So we start our run with picking Meliodas because of his passive, which says if your characters has two or less card, you get a 20% basic stats buff for one turn, which is really good at the start of the turn, you get it. So if you are running a three character team, your characters will always have two card. So you get the buff. And his AoE card just to make the first enemies easier and you know take them down faster. Then after finishing that fight, we get our first passive. Here I go for the all stats increase for humans because my aim is to go for humans. And I know there are a lot of powerful humans, especially the ultimate discounter, but you will not get it on the first floor. So I'm aiming to get a Lilia or Brunhild or any other human that do a lot of damage, a lot of good damage. So that's why I picked um, that uh, passive. And then we level up and then we have the characters to pick. Um, there's nothing that fits what I want. So I rerolled and I got these. So the first thing that my eyes went to is to get uh, Estorosa because of his taunt. You know, it protects you and also deals damage and it's ultimate as well. It does a good damage and prevent the enemy from attacking you for that turn. So that's actually really good. That's why I picked that even though that I have a human passive. So you can't force it to get the character or stuff like that. So you just go for it and, you know, hopefully you get the good characters. Just like here uh, in the shop, I have two characters, two human characters. There's Mono and there's Lilia. The Lilia do some good damage with her um, uh, AOE attack. So I picked her and, you know, it put on a dissolve. So sometimes you can protect yourself from ultimate until the next turn after that. If you got more card of that, you can just dissolve, dissolve, dissolve. So you will not get ultimate. All right, so after that fight, we got another passive and here I don't see anything that could fit my team or do anything good for me. So I'm just gonna reroll, hopefully to get something better. And I didn't get that much of this good stuff. The first one is a giant, the last one is goddesses and I don't have any of them not planning to go for any so I just picked up the demon all stats increase because I am running a demon right now and here I just go for Arthur just you know <laughs> because of another taunt and because he is a human so I'm, I'm going to be using two card for humans so and then another one for demon I will get three buffs on the turn after that so I'll be more tanky and the turn that gets back to me I can dish out more damage. And so this was my strategy for this team to go and fight Tarmiel. You know, this kind of works to make me more tankier until I kill the guy. And here we win this fight as well. So we are facing the big boss, the one that gave me so much of hard time until I beat him and uh, uh, guys, this fight, this fight took literally, literally more than like 10 to 11 minutes. So, you know, I'm just going to speed this up and uh, I wanted to show it to you guys how much back and forth there was. Like there was so much back and forth until the last time I could kill the guy and uh, hopefully we enjoy this fight <laughs> until we go into the next floor.
And here, after so many times, so many turns back and forth, we finally took down Tarmil, and our way is open for floor two. Hopefully, we can beat Sariel. You know, that's the annoying guy because he has a damage cap, and that's like kind of hinders you to always wait for a turn. All right, so right away we go into the first fight in the floor two. And by this time we know we can beat the normal enemies, of course. Our team is more capable, so we just go for it and take them down easily. Um, look at that. Ad. I mean, look at that dragon looking Christmas tree thing. You know, he looks cool. <clears throat> so, so we get our passive after that. And the passive doesn't look so good because you know it doesn't benefit so much of my team so i just go for a reroll normally and another one is the all stats increase so at this point i don't know if they will stack or not even <laughs> so at this moment i don't know if they stack or not so i just go for enemy attack decrease just you know to be safe um yeah if i know they will stack i'll pick them you know multiple one of these but i don't know i just feel like they might cancel each other out or just one of them might work and could be the lower one so i don't know just didn't go for it so yeah then we go for the level up increase and see our character that we can pick and here i change estorosa to the chandler just because uh, i feel like his uh, taunt is much much better so you know just the uh, same team same team definitely just um I, I guess a better character here okay after that we go and fight the remaining enemies and because we have some good damage and passives we can take them down easily then later on after that we go for the shop and because we don't have enough fragments so we just pick up the leveling up you can go for awakening as well but here i just decided to go for um level then we go and fight the remaining enemies to give us the last passive that we can get for free. And um, because we have the good characters here, again, we can take them down. And that's why I changed Chandler, Estoros of a Chandler, because of his taunt. He does more damage, so that's really good. Then we pick up the passive here. And uh, of course, human increase attack by 150%. I would love that. <laughs> then we have the chance to pick another human and we change Arthur for Mono. Then some Awakening. And after that, we go and fight the last remaining enemies before the boss, which are these giants. And well, of course, because the pa because of the passive we just picked up, it's a piece of cake. Like, it's, just, it's really easy. So we take them down. And now we are prepared to go against the guy. The legend himself, Sariel, the boss. He's annoying, he's annoying, but um, we have passives, we have good passives, so it can be easy here. So we just go for a mono attack, because why not, it's level two. Then that, then a taunt, you know, the, you never go out, go out without a taunt if you are picking a character to taunt the enemy, because, well, Sariel, like I told you, have a 30% damage cap, so you want to live or you want to deal the ton damage to stay alive. And here, <laughs> he took it down. That's why I chose Chandler, guys. With the demon buff we picked up earlier and the human's uh, buff as well after you use a card, it was really a piece of cake. So then we go to third floor and right away pick up the HP recovery potion and go fight the next remaining enemy. So you know after this the remaining enemies in the floor 3 are pretty much easy for us because of the passives and level up, awaken, everything that we got. We got a good team to take them all down, then we got the passive, then after the passive here, none of them actually works for my team, so I'm not planning to reroll. So I just, you know, take the HP related stat increase for the demons. You know, it doesn't do that much, but well, better than nothing. 
So we go for leveling, then we have a chance to pick up a character and I choose to not to because I'm not so sure that it will be good or not. So I didn't want to do any mistake and Chandler is doing actually good for me for now. So I didn't want to go and change that. So then we fight the wolves and we can easily take them down. Then with that, we get to go and shop and in the shop, we get the chance to get the amazing ultimate Esknor and we change it with Lilia because he's humans and um, well guys everything from here just becomes a breeze because of the passive we got the attack is so good here and then later on we get all the passives and you know we have all the chances to get all the stuff as well so all right we take all these the enemies and the passive that we get is the heroes, human heroes defense by 200% increase. So that's really good. So then we have the character pickup. I here at this moment, I didn't want to pick any or especially goddesses because I didn't have any buff for them. So I just, you know, I said, why not? I changed the mono for um, the do seal or Margaret, if you want to say, call her that. Let me know, just I'm going to buff my whole team which bought the Escanor as well that's our main goal and use the attack to take the enemy down easily that's why I picked her picked her up she's not so good if you don't have so many good passives that would work on her so yeah and just keep that in mind but at this moment I knew that I got some good stats to be able to take down the boss mile and here we are just going for the buff from uh, Margaret, and then the, the Chandra Taunt, and then the Escanor's Finger, you know. The card that does insane amount of damage, and then that there's the remaining damage again on the guy. It's so good. It's literally so good. If you are starting, like after you do the run and start again using Os Escanor, the, the beginning enemies are just like such an easy task to take them down. So here we are dealing some okay damage with Chandler just you know to keep up the health between like half or a little bit more and then after this we just easily go for the kill with the Eskinor's card because we have so many buff so it would be really easy to take down the boss here and we do it just like that and with this the last floor is done on the labyrinth from here now on we just go for the last phase which is the underground floor and then here we save the team that we are cleared the labyrinth with so you know if you want to farm the underground labyrinth you can use this team all the time again until you you know beat it or you want to change it start again and use one of these units that you already have, which definitely should be Escanor. And with that, you can do a lot of fun runs here. And uh, I've been enjoying that. I've been just going again and again and again from the floor one, picking different passive, different units. Just so much fun here. So the Labyrinth bosses, you know, the character here, the enemies you're fighting are mostly bosses. So the bosses are not so hard with Escanor's, you know, power. So we just take them down easily, just like that, one by one. Until we get to the last boss, which is the dragon. And the, the, the art and animation for that dragon is literally so cool. So we are almost there beating this enemy. And then this bear, then there's another dragon. We take down the dragon. And then here we go for the final boss, the Fenrir Spirit, the dragon, the cool looking one. And we get our CC, so you're gonna be attacking us three times. And you know guys, by this time, you know that I don't have goddesses buff, so Margaret is in a dire situation here. But uh, luckily she didn't die, so we can use her ability or her card to give us more buffs. And then go for the normal way, you know, a taunt from Chandler and an attack from Escanor. And then we get two buffs on them. So that's actually good. And with the buff from Margaret, that will be a lot of damage. That will be 
we will be dealing to the enemy. So he attacks us. Hopefully, I I wish I didn't like um, turned off the animation because it's such a cool ultimate, like literally a robot. So cool, you should watch it yourself. And then after Chandler dealing some good damage, we go for two card from Escanor. Just you know, take it down the enemy, and we go for another attack from Chandler. So the first one kills the enemy. The second one. Kinda tries to, but <laughs> couldn't kill. So Chandler, you know, doesn't deal that much of a damage, so he will not kill it. Then the turn after that, we easily take down the dragon. And with that, we end our run. So guys, if you have sticked around till this point, thank you so much. You are an absolute legend. With this, we end our video, and I hope that it was somewhat helpful for you guys if you haven't already finished the Labyrinth runs. So thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, hope you have a nice time and uh, I would love you to comment what your thoughts on the video or on the labyrinth itself and what else do you want me to make videos on. See you around in another video.